Page 106, Mexican Clapping Song. This is another lead sheet, or where you get to improvise. They give you the melody, and they give you the chords above the staff. Then you have to make up the accompaniment. Well, first thing to do is make sure you can play the melody all right, because you're going to spend most of your effort trying to figure out the accompaniment. So the melody has to be fairly automatic. So here, three, four time, here. it's just a broken sword. C chord and then cross over, rest, then come up, two, three, and then come back down, rest, so forth, measure nine, you're here, rest, come up, now you're in a position, rest, and then measure 15, it's a two and then a three. Then a f for then measure 20, it's a 3. Go back to F. And then the DC Alfine sends you back to the top. Remember, DC go to the beginning. So you just reach down here. And then the Fine, if you look, is at the uh, measure 10. It's the second ending there on the third line. At the end, you see the double bars, and there's a fine. It's, in my opinion, should be a thin and thick bar there because it's the fine. But that's that's you go to there. Now, when you do the DC, see a lot of times you don't do the repeat signs on the second ending or on the ending. So you you don't do the repeat signs again is what I'm trying to say. However, if you look at the endings, this is the last of the second line. It's like measure seven. The ending is actually a one and a three. That means it is the first ending and the third ending. It, it, there's two endings combined, one and three. And then I go to measure nine, you see a two and a four. Well, that's measure uh, ending two and ending four. Well, when it, they do that, when you do the DC, they want you to do the endings again. So the first time through it, you do first ending here. Then you repeat back, and then you come down again. Then you do the second ending at measure 9. And go on down to the bottom, and you do the DC and come back. Now you're going to do the third ending, because you've done two endings. And that's up there on the second line. And you repeat. Go back to the beginning, and now you're going to do the fourth ending. And that's where the 4 comes in, there at measure 9. And then you end it. So they can combine endings together, and obviously they did. And it can get more interesting than this, too. You've got to watch out. So you figure out the melody, and now we, let's do the chords. Well, first, let's just make sure we know what the chords are. Well, just do block chords. Well, they're C chords. You have a C here at the beginning, and then a G7. These are the primary chords, and the key is C here, here. Uh, measure 5 still is G7 and C. 7 and C, and then past the second ending, you get an F chord, that's the 4 chord, you're here. That's all we're doing, just a primary chord. And you have the NC, there, the last two notes on the first line and so forth, it's an NC. That stands for no chord. That means you don't play a chord. The notes are by themselves. If you have a guitar player playing along with you on this, they don't play on the no chords. They're, they're quiet on those. That's all that is. So they'll put them together. A C chord. I'm just playing a block chord at the beginning of each measure. See, there's no chords there. It's by itself. And go on. you repeat. Let's go on to measure nine here. Here, here. Here you get a chord with each beat. Now an F chord. C chord. You get the idea? Just chords with it. Then once you do that, then we can try varying the company mic because these block chords are boring. Well, they give you an example over here on page 107 of the waltz type thing. And that waltz accompaniment works good in 3-4 time because this is 1-2-3. So, so try that out here. 
So I just do a block chord on the G7 because that's by itself. So we're done. Now just the block chord. Then major five. So forth. Go down to after the second ending on the third line of the F chord. You hear? Uh, last line, start at measure where the G7 chord is, here. Just a chord, and then here, and then we go back to the beginning. But this accompaniment pattern is just one of many, because I can also do, since there's three beats in a measure and there's three notes in each chord, I can do one note at a time. And for the third line down with the F. So forth. Mix them up. Sometimes you'll do this pattern. Sometimes this pattern. Mix it up. It's you and your imagination of how you want to play this. Experiment. You, you'll have some ideas on patterns that you'll collect over time. And you can add these to your library of ideas that you can try things out. There's no wrong. As long as it sounds good to you, that's fine. Go for it. And articulation wise, it's a song, it's an arrangement. You can change the articulation, you can change the dynamics, you can change what you want after you get to know it. Play the, the way it's written first. And then if you feel like it, just keep the accompaniment in the background. It's the melody we we'll want to hear. Speed-wise, whatever Lively is, there's a lot of recordings of this about it. Just in the left hand. You'll have to play a note on every beat. Eighth notes. It's you and your imagination and the rhythm and all. Have fun with it. 